Top 10 Anticipated Motorcycles of 2017 In just a few days 2017 will be here, which means there will be a metric crap ton of new bikes to ride. This clearly gets us very excited, and so we're taking the opportunity with this, the last top 10 list of 2016, to point out the 10 new motorcycles we're most looking forward to riding in the coming year. 10. Ducati Monster 797 Ducati is taking the Monster lineup back to its roots with the 2017 Monster 797. Its slim fuel tank is reminiscent of the original, Miguel Galaxy design Monsters, and its air-cooled 803cc V-twin lacks the unsightly hoses and radiators necessary for the more powerful liquid-cooled Monsters, like the Monster 1200 as we rode in Monaco. The result is a cleaner, less cluttered-looking monster with unmistakable heritage mixed with modern technology. Ducati claims 75 horses at the crank for the engine mostly shared with the scrambler that spat out 70 horses at its rear wheel, which should be plenty to propel this lightweight monster well into the fun zone at a rapid pace. It may not have the glitz or the glam as its more powerful 1200 sibling, but we think it looks great and 75 horses are more than enough for us to have a good time. 9. Kawasaki Z900 I was pleasantly surprised at how much fun I had riding the new 2017 Kawasaki Z650 at its intro earlier this year. I figured the bike would be a reincarnation of the ER6N, the porky naked bike sharing the same basic engine as the Z-Boy was I wrong. The Z650's 410 pounds, with ABS, feels feathery light between the legs, and the parallel twin now has more punch in the midrange and bottom end. Lightweight and lots of torque are just the ingredients we like when it comes to the naked bike category. So, if the Z650 is good, then the Z900 must be better, right? With a claimed 124 horsepower coming from its 948cc inline 4, the 900 is also tuned to come alive in the mid-range. A steel trellis frame not only looks cool but is said to be even lighter than the one on the Z650. Kai says the 900 tips the scales at 460 pounds, add 4 pounds with ABS, which is a little on the hefty side, but also why the big Z only slots at the number 9 spot. We're hopeful Kawasaki cleverly hides the weight and makes the Z900 feel like the Z650 on steroids. 8. Mini Adventure Quartet Flogging about on big adventure bikes is a lot of fun, as we demonstrated in our wire wheel adventure shootout this year, but let's face it, those bikes are heavy. Big adventure bikes can be taxing when ridden on technical off-road terrain and there were more times than we care to admit that we had to pick them up off their sides after their mass overcame our balance and strength. And all of them are priced well into the quintuple digits, putting adventure out of reach for many riders. In response, 2017 is looking to be the year of the mini-adventure bike. With no less than four new players in this field, the BMW G310GS, Honda CRF250L Rally, Kawasaki vs. X300, and Suzuki v Strom 250-7. KTM 1290 Super Adventure R The four mini-adventure bikes talked about in the number 8 spot exist to prepare you for the behemoth that is this, the 2017 KTM 1290 Super Adventure R big, powerful, and ready to conquer the world. The Super Adventure R is KTM's answer for the 1% of adventure riders who really are world travelers. The 1301cc V-twin shared with the almighty 1290 Super Duke Car Street Fighter will deliver similarly outrageous forward thrust in Super Adventure trim, while the revised and updated WP suspension is ready to venture off the beaten path, no matter how beaten that path is and the full suite of electronics is there to help ensure both you and the bike come out the other side. Granted, the most staff may not be world travelers, but we'd like to pretend we are for a day or two. And in a couple of months, we'll be riding KTM's adverb beast in Peru. 6. Yamaha R6 
Leader class sport bikes may be where all the manufacturers have dumped their resources during the past decade, but we're glad Yamaha hasn't forgotten about the venerable YZFR6 with this long-awaited update. Boasting killer looks, more aerodynamic bodywork, R1 suspension, and a full kit of electronics, the new R6 promises to be a light, nimble, and rewarding package we can't wait to rip around a racetrack. In contrast to leader-sized smart bikes, the new R6 will be able to be shifted past third gear at most tracks. 5. BMW R9 at Racer, Pure The Mo staff actually disagree slightly on this one. Names will be spared to protect the guilty, but some of the group really dig the R9 at Racer for its classic, old-school retro racer looks. It's the same reason they liked the Ducati Sport 1000S and Paul's Smart Limited Edition that came before it. Others, meanwhile, bring up the fact the R9 at Racer is entirely impractical and uncomfortable, with its clip-on bars a long reach from the saddle, just like the aforementioned retro-inspired Ducatus. Those in that camp point to the R9 at Pure being the more practical choice, just like the GT1000 was the more sensible offering in Ducati's Sport Classic line. With upright bars and lower pegs, it's the one to be on for longer rides. Though we might disagree on the details, one thing is for sure, we really dig the R9 at. Both bikes share the same steel frame, suspension brakes and 1170cc air-cooled boxer twin, which, let's face it, is the star of the show anyway. No matter which of the two we get to ride, we're just happy BMW is expanding upon the line. And we didn't even mention the recently announced R9T Urban GS. 4. Triumph Street Scrambler Triumph is on a roll right now with the release of its updated modern classic line and we're sure the Street Scrambler is just another example of a platform that will benefit from the new 900cc parallel twin first seen in the Street Twin, another bike we really like. Wearing all the right Scrambler attire, with plenty more available in the Triumph catalog, the Street Scrambler benefits from slightly different suspension and wider bars compared to the Bonneville on which it's faced. All that aside, here's a big reason we want to ride the Scrambler. When we see the picture above, of the rider letting loose in the sand, we want to do the same thing. 3. Ducati Supersport The Everyman's Panigale, Ducati's new Supersport and Supersport S models offer sporting capabilities that are more accessible to the masses, while also being more comfortable than the Superbike flagship. Powered by a 937cc Testastretta 11 degrees twin as used in the Hypermota Erd 939 recently tested at 101 horsepower at its rear wheel, the bike has plenty of punch, but not enough to be overwhelming like the big Panigale, you could call it the Goldilocks of the Ducati Spart bike, or Sporty bike, line. And Ducati has specced out various packages as options including a sport package and a touring package to go alongside it. Spell out the ingredients and you have an athletic engine mated to a Ducati trellis frame, with rational street bias goes, capable suspension and sticky rubber. We can see the story forming now, more on ride super sport to far away track, ditches the panniers, dons leathers, destroys knee pucks, then rides home. Can you see why this bike ranks so high up the list? 2. Honda CBR 1000 RR The gloves are coming off now as we approach the two bikes we're most looking forward to riding in 2017. First up is the 2017 Honda CBR 1000 RR, a bike that promises to be a massive step forward in the CBR, Fireblade lineage. Honda did something a little different here. Instead of marching towards the 200 horsepower threshold like all of its competitors, Team Red put the CBR on a massive diet plan to make it one of the lightest litter bikes on the market, shaving a massive 33 pounds compared to its predecessor by incorporating what was once thought to be exotic materials like magnesium and titanium. If Honda's claim of 430 pounds, ready to ride, 
is correct then only the Ducati 1299 Banigal beats it with its 420 pound curb weight. Still, that's a 14% improvement in power to weight ratio than the outgoing CBR. 1. Suzuki GSX-R1000 While Honda's approach to its litter bike was to focus on weight, handling, and electronics, Suzuki decided to throw the entire kitchen sink at the new GSX-R1000 and GSX-R1000R, the motorcycle we're most looking forward to riding in 2017. All the technical mumbo-jumbo is covered in John's story linked above, but know that variable valve timing is the big talking point here, and it's said to be one of the big reasons the GSX-Rs, both of them, are rated to meet the magical 200 horsepower threshold while also increasing mid-range power. Couple that with the latest show as suspension, Brembo brakes and a whole slew of electronics directed by an EMU, and you start to get an idea of why we're so eager to ride the new Jixxer in the coming year.